Thank you, Gladdy, for reading that scripture. And good morning, church. Uh, it's wonderful to be here again. And uh, it's nice to see all those familiar faces so that, you know, we can share our experiences in our lives so that we can encourage one another in our walk with Jesus Christ. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge that today's sermon is taken from a lot of places, especially from the internet, on the YouTube, and a couple of scriptures written here and there from different uh, websites. And I'd like to acknowledge that this is not mine, but I've taken some experts, and I have compiled it as one. And if you can see on the screen, the title is says, How is my driving? All those who drive a motorcycle or a car very well know what happens when somebody cuts across us uh, or somebody unruly comes to our side, pushes us to the side and you know, uh, doesn't give way and always block our free movement. And at times we get annoyed and angry at such kind of people. And often nowadays on school buses and lorries we see such kind of stickers stuck to them, you know, asking how is my driving, they write the vehicle number and you know, they write a phone number there. In one such incident, a lady was driving a car and suddenly a truck driver just cut past through her and you know she was scared and you know awestruck and she had to break suddenly and you know feel that sense of rage coming into her. She was scared and as she was looking around getting herself back into the senses and she saw this on the truck that was in front and said you know suddenly she put, pulled the phone out Nowadays you can call sitting in the car by just telling uh, Google Assistant to dial a number or you know take the phone, dial a number or on the dashboard you can dial a number and he, she called the number. And the lady who answered the call there, yes, good morning, she said. And in her outrageous attitude, that lady said, you know, your truck, so and so, number so and so, is cut through me, his driving is very bad, that, this, and all. She went on with all the furious thoughts in her and she told everything, whatever she could tell it to that lady. On the other hand, that lady who was there very politely said, Ma'am, you can also call if the driver is driving well. Suddenly the person who's calling went back. Why am I so outraged? What did that person do? He just cut across me. Why am I so outraged with the driving? If we have to take this example and see about our Christian walk of life, instead of, instead of reading how is my driving there, let's replace it by saying how is my Christian life? To be more specific, how is my Christian behavior? We can replace it there with like this. Is anybody calling God and complaining about me? Or is anybody calling God and thanking God for me or us and thanking for the person to be a blessing in, in our life or they're calling to complain, I hate so-and-so person, I hate so-and-so type of attitudes. This is what I like to dwell on today. How is our Christian behavior? Is it rude? Is it rash? Is it ungodly? Is it hurtful? Is it deceptive? Well, in all of this, 
if we look through the scriptures there are a lot of things that god is warning us through the scriptures and all of us know that you know the scriptures are given to us to admonish us in second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 all scripture is god breathed and is useful for teaching rebuking correcting training in righteousness so that the servant of god may be thoroughly equipped for every good work i hope everybody agrees that all the scriptures that are there in the bible are inspired by god and his spirit and nobody has a doubt about it because if you read along from genesis to revelation you see that there is the spirit of god that is leading the author to write what god intends to do and in all of this god is asking us to put on an image of god as per the scriptures the image of god the mind of god and how are we putting on this mind of god in ourselves in this context i like to say let's look at what a mind is a mind that we always refer to our head the brain and all let's see what the dictionary defines the mind to be the mind is that which thinks always thinks imagines remembers wills and senses the one that is in our head the seat of thought the mind is also associated with experiencing perception experiencing pleasure pain belief desire intention and emotion this is what we call that's within our head the mind the thought process that takes place in our head the mind it's not the brain i put a picture of a brain but the thoughts that take place in the brain is the mind it can experience pain pleasure it can believe it has desires it has intentions it has emotions that affect our outward behavior so in our christian life in our christian behavior this mind plays a very important role i hope you guys agree about how important the mind is reading through all the scriptures i have come to understand that there is life and death in this mind whether we know it or not i have come to know out of this experience of preparing that there is life and death but the mind that we have as individuals how is it what did god tell in the bible about this mind right from genesis we see that our minds are fallen diseased filled with sin right from adam and they are and it is an enmity against god romans chapter 8 word 8 to 7 says because the carnal mind is enmity against god for it is not subject to the law of god neither indeed can be those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires but those who live in accordance with the spirit have their mind set on the things the spirit desires the mind governed by the flesh is death but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace mind governed by the flesh is hostile to god it does not submit to god's law nor can it do so naturally we have a mind that is against god and his will 
it's dead against god's will we and those who are in the realm of flesh cannot please god this is what paul is telling to the romans we as mere human beings cannot please god with this human carnal mind why because our minds are tuned and are developed right from our birth to be an enemy of god it's not subject to the law of god or to the nature of god it doesn't have the capacity to subject itself to the very nature of god it subject itself to the flesh the desires of the flesh so the first thing that influences our behavior our christian life is the mind which is an enemy to god the second thing that the mind plays with us is the mind gets blinded in second corinthians 2 verse 4 and 4 3 and even if our gospel is veiled it is veiled to those things who are perishing the god of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of christ who is in the image of god the prince of this world has blinded the minds of people mark this in second timothy 3 1 to 5 it says this world there are a lot of terrible times in the last days see what is in the world timothy is paul is writing to timothy in second timothy 3 1 to 5 people will be lovers of themselves people will be lovers of money people will be boastful proud abusive disobedient to their parents which we often see ungrateful unholy without love unforgiving slanderous without self control brutal not lovers of good treacherous rash conceited lover of pleasure rather than lover of god having a form of godliness but denying its power having nothing to do with such people paul is writing to timothy and saying you know the world is full of things and attitudes that are against god the mind that we have is blinded by the prince of this world that is satan the devil he blinds it in such a way that people are confused to know who is their savior he confuses the mind in such a way that they are confused to believe that jesus christ is the one who died for their sins and is granting them salvation and eternal life if you believe in him satan puts a blinding image in front of them so that they cannot see or cannot perceive this is what happens to people who don't believe all of us have two sets of eyes you must be wondering why i'm saying two sets of eyes one set is the physical eye where it is 100% good where we see things clearly through our physical eyes there is nothing wrong with the first set the physical eyes you can see things you can perceive things you can understand things but spiritually the second set will be completely blinded by satan no matter how much you tell them about god how much you tell them about our savior jesus christ satan has put a blinds in front of their eyes they do not understand it their minds cannot be opened to the truth it cannot perceive the truth that jesus is the son of god who has come to save us the world is blinded 
the mind plays such an important role where Satan has pinpointed and targeted this mind so that people are deceived. The purpose of God is to save everybody through Jesus Christ. But the purpose of Satan is to deceive everybody so that they cannot enjoy the presence of God in their lives. The sun which has risen has the same capacity to harden clay and at the same time have the capacity to melt butter. Do you understand the two concepts? So, the mind has the ability to harden itself, not to believe, and at the same time, understand if God wills. Why didn't I see this before? Now it is clear that I understand who God is. We are influenced in our Christian life and uh, in our Christian behavior through our mind. So what is it, as Gladdy read, where are we sowing the seed? Are we sowing the seed physically in this world? Are we sowing the seed spiritually? The next point that I would like to bring about about the mind is, the mind is always doubtful. Luke 12, verse 29. Well, I like to read from verse 23 onwards where Jesus said, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap, they have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow it is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And verse 29 it says, And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. How many times do we doubt God? The mind puts us in a doubt. That's because we do not completely, willingly give ourselves to God. We doubt God in such a way. We pray and ask God to get things done for us. At the same time, we also doubt Him. How many times did it happen in our personal lives where we prayed to God, asking God to please help us out? And when the moment comes, we doubt, will God do it really? I hope when you reflect back into your lives, it does. I can tell you by example in my own life that many times I ask God to do my will. God has a better will for me which I didn't trust. At the same time, we pray and ask God, Lord, let this be done like this, let this be done like this. And we doubt Him. This is what Satan does. He puts, creates doubts in our mind so that, you know, we do not fully trust in him. Paul understood this mind very clearly and if you read through the New Testament, 
in most of the books he talks about this mind the mind that we need to have in our lives in a letter that he has written to titus he also says that our minds are defiled by nature by habit they are defiled to such an extent that it's the second nature not to be truthful he writes to titus in titus 1 10 to 16 i'll read a little bit from verse 10 so that you'll get a glimpse of what's happening for there are many rebellious people full of meaningless talk deception especially those of the circumcision group they must be silenced because they are disrupting whole household by teaching things they ought not to teach and for and that for the sake of dishonest gain one of crete's own prophets has said Cre- cretans are all are always liars evil brutes and lazy cuttins paul is writing with the experience that he has that you know when he wrote to titus who is in crete there is a mindset that is there that is defiled by nature and it is very evidently written by one of their very own authors a prophet of crete cretans are always liars evil brutes lazy gluttons because of this mindset because of this mindset god also has given the human beings away because they are not acknowledging god acknowledging his spirit in the bible says that those who do not acknowledge god and try to follow his steps his ways god has given them to the devil and they are in the process of creating more bad things evil things worse things that are not according to the nature of god but according to the nature of this world for us if you look back we can see that our mind is an enemy of god our mind is blinded by satan our minds are always doubtful our minds are always defiled this is the very nature of human beings because we have fallen but god has given us another promise an encouraging promise if we look at romans chapter 12 verse 2 therefore i urge you brethren brothers and sisters in view of god's mercy to offer your bodies as living sacrifice holy and pleasing to god this is your true and proper worship do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what god's will is his good pleasing and perfect will god is giving us an opportunity where paul recognized the carnal mind that is an enemy to god can be renewed through the association of the holy spirit in our lives which can be transformed from the carnal nature into a nature that is reflecting the very image of god we have this opportunity as believers where are we sowing our seed are we sowing it into the flesh or are we sowing it into the spirit for the flesh will always bring destruction but if we sow in the right place in the spirit 
it will bring us eternal life moses who has been a tremendous leader for the israelites in the only psalm that he has written in the book of psalms verse uh, psalms 90 in the entire experiences that he has gone through in his life he writes lord teach me to number my days i am now 53 years old the average age of a male person in india is about 65.8 months the average age of a female in india is 68.9 months I am already 58 53 in another few years I'll be gone how little time do I have to correct my mind so that it falls in place as God wants me to be do I have the time to correct myself and obey God in the manner that he wants me to be put on that image in my life can i do that in the time that is left time is very very short in our lives do we recognize the importance of time in our lives are we sowing the right seed at the right time teach us to number our days is what moses is saying and if we take those days most of the days are filled with sorrow and pain and hard work how much time do we have to really take out for our own selves and think about god very less so in the little time that is left let's ask god to help us out to focus on the spiritual things help us to sow the seed into the spiritual realm where no rust or moth can affect it help us to put on a mind that will help us gain the eternal life that god has promised us in a letter to philippians paul wrote let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus the mind of Jesus be in us what kind of transformation that has to affect us and in and in a letter to the colossians he writes in colossians 32 set your minds on things above and not on the things of earth with this encouraging thought where we can renew our mind let's not forget that whatever we do whatever actions whatever thoughts that each one of us are looked upon are weighed upon in the same psalm what moses wrote at one point i think in verse 8 it says our sins are evident in front of god size our darkest sins are clearly seen by god we might think that nobody is seeing us and do things which are not right as per god's laws are very evidently clearly shown are seen by god so brethren i am asking you requesting you when we have the time here to make a decision to sow our life our thoughts our deeds in the right path so that we will be saved by our lord and savior god has sent his son for us imagine he is taking the place for our sins I am not here to tell you what the mind does but I'm asking you to reach out to your senses to your emotions to your belief to introspect where we need to change where we need to be corrected 
and where we need to take the right steps of correction so that we are in the right path sowing the right seeds so that we might endure the race just like an athlete who's training for an olympic on a regular basis they keep training so that they are improving day by day in the particular field and every day they learn something every day they learn some correction in their course and at time comes where they are ready to participate into the race are we practicing every day what god has asked us to do are we being kind are we being compassionate are we being the person that god wants us to be are we practicing daily if not it's the time now that we can start it's not too late but when the race comes which we do not know when we will be ready to run the race and endure it if not if you are not practicing we will participate but we cannot finish the race so let's practice little by little every day so that we are fit to be in the kingdom of god that our minds are renewed and transformed in the way that god wants us to do so brethren in the end i like to bring about this galatians chapter 6 verse 7 to 10 and especially in verse 7 do not be deceived the world around us is full of deception it doesn't want us to have a relationship with god satan the prince of this world has many ways to deceive us so galatians to the galatians what paul is writing here is so many understood do not be deceived god cannot be ma- mocked god can see everything every thought the intent of every thought very clearly just like a bright good day even the things that we think in secret in darkness are very clear in god's sight we might think to ourselves we might scold somebody in our mind and say i wish that person dies god can see that also the intent of that thought do not be deceived god cannot be mocked a man reaps what he sows whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life so brethren i'm asking you all sincerely to come to the lord ask for repentance repentance is the attitude of change be willing to change submit to god let god's will be enabled in your life when you are willing to change and submit your thoughts your minds to god god will definitely work with you and help you out in such a manner where he will help you renew your mind so that our minds are fashioned like the minds of jesus christ and proverbs chapter 21 verse 1 says the king's heart is in the hands of the lord the king's heart like the river of water he turns it wherever he wishes the heart of a king is in the hands of the lord if god wills he can make him into a good king or a bad king likewise in verse 2 of proverbs 21 every way of a man is right in his own eyes but the lord weighs the heart so don't be deceived god cannot be mocked i urge you brethren 
to bring your thoughts and be willing to change so that we do not lose out on the eternal life that God has promised us. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we come to your presence this morning, understanding, Lord, that we are carnal. Our nature is an enemy to you. We are blinded by the prince of this world. Our minds are doubtful, they are deceitful. And Lord, yet you loved us in all our weakness. And you have given us a way through Jesus Christ to draw to you, O oh Lord, to come close to you, to renew our minds so that we can enjoy your presence in our lives. Lord, as we are willing, we ask you that you please work with each one of us in our lives. Help us, O oh Lord, to recognize where we are going wrong. Help us, O oh Lord, to introspect ourselves, correct ourselves, and draw closer to you. Thank you, Lord, for your word and your scriptures. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.